Hey, before we get in this episode, can you do us a favor? Will you go ahead and subscribe to the channel? We you ring that notification bell? And if you would, give this video a like. Well, enough of that mumbo jumbo. Let's get to the episode. Let's talk developmentally speaking, glow up, and connecting through wrestling. Hey everybody, I'm Morty. And I'm Brian. And on today's episode of Developmentally Speaking Presents Glow Up, we have the Royal Hawaiian. April, how's it going? Aloha guys, I'm great, Aloha. how are you? Uh, can't complain. Um, back at it after uh, I had to take a week off because of sickness, but I'm doing good. And, good. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're better. Thank you. Thank and you I so like much. your guys' glow up logo, by the way. Thank you. That's, that's Thank pretty. You. That's pretty eighties. I need one of those. I'll have to send you one. Yeah, absolutely. I'll have to send you one. <laughs> we could do a swap. Okay. Right on. Well, we ask everybody the same first question, and it's it's very uh, cut and dry, but it's a good place to start. How did you get into wrestling? Well, I didn't really know anything about wrestling. So um, when I was um, working in Hollywood, I worked at a secretarial service uh, right in the heart of Hollywood between Sunset and Hollywood Boulevard on El Centro, right in the middle of Hollywood. And basically my, my boss, her name was Marianne, and she knew that I was an aspiring actress. I was a dancer, model, actress, and I was in Hollywood to try and break into the business. I had been an entertainer. I've been dancing since I was five years old. And so I was there. My agent worked right across the hall from our office. And my agent was Bob Yanez, who was partners with uh, Jeff Bridges, who was Todd Bridges' dad from different strips. Mm -hmm. And so they got the call that was for a TV pilot. And it said they're looking for all kind of girls, all walks of life, shapes and sizes, ethnicities. The only thing that they did have what information about was that if you had athletic abilities, that would be a plus. That was as much as they said. They didn't say anything about what it was for. It was a family show and it was for a pilot. So they gave me the information. I went, it was at the Hyatt on Sunset and uh, I got there and there was a thousand girls or thereabouts. Wow. And there was a ring in the middle of the room. <laughs> And so at that particular audition, myself and Hollywood were only the only two from the original 12 of us that ended up being at that audition. And um, when David McLean and Matt Simber, the director, came out, they said, well, welcome everybody. You're all here for a all women's wrestling league for a TV pilot. And everybody kind of was like, we're here to, what? You know? So a third of the girls got up and left. They're like, I'm not breaking a nail. I'm not getting hurt. What the heck am I doing here? And so for me, I was like, this is a no brainer. I said, it's a TV pilot. So it may or may not get on TV, but I'm here to, to kind of right. take my chances and see where it goes. And they basically had us get up and tumble a little bit then i was a cheerleader i was an athlete i played softball i played basketball i grew up between two brothers so i was a tomboy but at the same time my mom kept me in the girly stuff so i started dancing i went to modeling and charm school and beauty pageants and all that so i was good to go i kind of had like a little bit of a, a little bit of everything mm -hmm. and then they also tried to um get us to open up about our personalities and you know Show, show us something on camera. They kind of gave us a little kind of a screen test and said, you know, we're looking for 12 characters. And, you know, for me, it was absolutely the best because it just dropped in my lap. And they said, we're looking for a Hawaiian girl who's going to be the Royal Hawaiian. I said, well, how about that? <laughs> Couldn't have been any easier for me. And so I got you know, up and they said, okay, tell us a little bit. If you were the Royal Hawaiian, tell us about you. Well, I lived in Hawaii for 25 years. I'm a hula dancer. I'm an athlete. I, I, I love everything about Hawaii. So I just kind of gave them a little bit of what I'd been doing since I was like, yeah, young. Mm -hmm. I, I started at about seven or eight. And so I just, you know, told them about me, what I did and this and that. And, and they were looking for all the different girls, you know, a Hollywood and Vine, looking for a Tina and Ashley, a Spanish Red, California Doll, Americana. And so they were kind of just feeling their way, looking through the girls and seeing who could possibly be one of those characters because they didn't know what we could do yet physically. 
but they were, you know, had to weed through all these girls to see who could maybe be part of this pilot. So it was pretty exciting. That is awesome. So yeah. out of a thousand people, there was only two that made it on that one. And it was you and Hollywood, which we've, yeah. all, we've also... They, they dwindled it down maybe to about 70, maybe, you know. Um, they just mm -hmm. kind of started to, you know, weed girls out and then kind of thought, okay, maybe those few could be a California doll, those could be a Spanish red, those could be a Royal Hawaiian. So, And then it got down to where they got us, you know, they had a few other auditions and then they got us into the smaller group of maybe about 40, 45 of us. And we trained down in Watts. So Mondo Guerrero was our trainer. Mm -hmm. And so we went to Watts, which was the greatest area, if you know where Watts is. <laughs> and so we originally had gotten driven down there to start off with because of the area mm -hmm. and then there was a biker bar right downstairs from the gym the gym was upstairs and so david mclean was concerned for our safety and so you know we had gotten driven down there at the beginning and then after a while i know my dad had taken me several times down and you know would go somewhere and then come back and pick me up or whatever and Eventually, David McLean was really smart. He hired a couple of the guys from downstairs to be like the watch guys at, at the downstairs door when we got there to make sure everybody got in safely and everybody left. So it was pretty, pretty intense, but it was lots of fun. And training with Mondo was, um, you know, really exciting for me because I knew absolutely nothing about wrestling, mm -hmm. nothing. So I started off from scratch with whatever he showed us is what I learned. and. Um, one one time we were training and the girls weren't paying attention to him and so he actually grabbed the closest girl to him put her in a sleeper hold and knocked her out so <laughs> she was on the on the mat just and so you know everybody was just like what the heck just happened you know and he's like okay do i have your attention because i'm not here to mess around you need to pay attention i don't want anybody getting hurt and from that point on boy everybody was just Okay, Mondo, we're paying attention, you know, and it was like, holy crap. So did, did that yeah. girl stick around or did she? she you know what? I, I, I think that particular girl, I think she got cut. Oh. I don't remember exactly who it was, but I know that we never <laughs> talked about that story as far as like one of us that survived the 12, you know, that, so I think it was a girl that got cut. Wow. Man, yeah. That, <laughs> get put to sleep by Mondo Guerrero. For Mondo for, Guerrero. For not yeah. And he talks about that too when we've done panels and interviews and stuff. And, and he'll say, oh, yeah, she was flip flopping like a fish. And, you know, but it was like, hey, he didn't want anybody getting hurt and they weren't paying attention. So, hey, he did what he had to do. I remember but he was, uh, Ivory was talking about that on that Glow documentary. She said she loved it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, we, had a, we had a good time. It was, you know, I mean, Aside from being serious that, you know, we didn't know what we were doing. Uh -huh. There were, you know, Matilda was, of course, experienced by by all means, you know. And then I think we had Jasmine, Princess Jasmine, and, and um, um, they were uh, salt and pepper. Uh -huh. And they both were um, wrestlers prior to GLOW. So there were a couple of them that were experienced and had already wrestled before. But for the majority of the other, you know, nine of us, we hadn't really had any experience. We were actresses, dancers, models, cheerleaders, what have you. And so um, it was just a learning, you know, a learning thing. We had to go through, you know, the training. And then from there, we did the pilot in December of 1985. And then from there, we had to sell it. And then once it sold and it sold, you know, we were pretty successful. We didn't really know it because they did not pick it up in Vegas. And so that's where the show was filmed at the Riviera Hotel. And we lived in the hotel, but they purposely did not pick up the show or sell the show in Vegas because they didn't want us to know exactly how good it was or how well we were doing. They didn't want us to get big heads and you know all of that. So it was really not until later on that we were going out and we'd be in public and people starting to recognize us. And we're like, well, wow. So the show is really taking off, you know? And then we found out later that they on purpose did not, did not pick it up in Vegas. Right. So technically they weren't lying in their minds. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> so they can well, tell you, you know, well, we don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
And we've talked yeah. about this. we talked about this before how they they kept your fan mail from you didn't want and it was it was it, by all means it was shady. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, well, it was it was kind of it sucked right because right. you figure here we were we're we're working hard we're doing this and of course granted nobody knew what the heck we were doing. I mean, David McLean had a great idea, great concept. He got hooked up with Matt Simber, who was the creative genius, right? He had all these great ideas. And then, you know, the two of them kind of didn't end up liking what was going on because David McLean really wanted strictly a wrestling show. Mm -hmm. That's all he wanted. But then all the creative stuff is what everybody ended up liking. All the campiness, all the skits, yes. the, the raps, the music video, Love just all, everything else we added to the show. And so then that's eventually why David McLean left. But the you know, beauty we, is, is that people still thought it was real. Because you guys kept kayfabe. Yep. Even it outside the ring. I mean, yeah, so that much, you know, David did have specifics. Like the, the heels couldn't hang out with the ba- the faces and you know if we if we went out and stuff like that because we were in the hotel now we could party in our room so we did you know i mean my roommate was americana so go figure right it's like okay well who are you roommate well and it made sense because we were both the trainers for season one and two right so when we trained with mondo mondo only chain trained the 12 original girls that did the pilot mm-hmm. and then once it got into season one and we had to hire all the other girls Jungle Woman and Dallas and, you know, um, the the second California doll, you know, uh, doot, 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 her and her little cute skits, you know, but all the ones from season one, Americana and I trained. And then after us, like I trained Nanichka, um, Nanichka became a trainer, Debbie Debutante. So it kind of, we handed down the reins, you know, as we started to leave, then some of the other girls ended up training the new girls. So season three and four were trained, I believe it was Nanichka and Debbie Debutante, and I think there was a couple others that also helped training the season three and four girls. I think Corporal Kelly will help train. Corporal Kelly, yes. So Corporal Kelly again, so she's another one. So um, Dallas, Killer Tomato, so these are girls who had wrestled before GLOW, so we had the experience there with Dallas and we had Corporal Kelly, you know, so we had some of the Mm -hmm. girls that did have some experience when you go into season three and four, most of those girls were actually fans of Glow. Yeah, and they were they were, you know, fans to where they were like, oh, we want to be like them. And then eventually, you know, they put the 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 ad at the end of the show. Do you have what it takes to be a Glow girl? Send in your resume and and pictures and da da da. And that's how we got lightning that's how we got roxy and sunny and daisy and and godiva you know all the ones from season three and four were because they were fans and you know that's how they ended up getting on the show so. I, th- I think that was a um part of another story that we heard said she her uh i don't remember which one it was but her um her boyfriend said you couldn't do this oh that's that's cheryl that's lightning mm-hmm. so her her boyfriend and her were watching wwf and after WWF is when we came on. Mm-hmm. So they were watching it and she was going, oh, that is stupid. You know, she was making fun of the show. And her boyfriend said, oh yeah, you're just jealous because they're on TV and you're not. And she said, no, oh, and he said, yes, uh-huh. And so they went back and forth. And so he said, well, why don't you do it then? And so she did, she faked the resume, she sent it in and they called her for an audition. She went to Vegas and she got hired. Next thing you know, she's a so superhero. You know, and it's it's funny because we, you know, we do interviews together and, and shows and stuff like that. And that's a true story, you know, and she became, you know, a great wrestler. Mm-hmm. She still is, you know, a stunt woman yes. and stunt coordinator in the movie industry today. And yeah, so it's amazing that, you know, you never know how someone came into the show where like even with um, Tina and Ashley. So Nadine, who is Ashley, she was an actress and she got an audition. And she was a Raider cheerleader and an Express cheerleader. She's the one who brought Tina Ferrari, mm-hmm. uh, Lisa Moretti. Mm-hmm. She says, oh, well, I'm going to Vegas. Why don't you come with me? I'm going for this audition, blah, blah, blah. She's the one who recruited Lisa Moretti, who ended up being the star of GLOW and going on to WWF. So, right. you know, you never know how, how it was going to, you know, t- turn out. And, you know, nobody, nobody told David McLean how to how to create an all women's wrestling league. Mm-hmm, this right. was just, we were flying by the seat of our pants, you know? I mean, um, 
when when we started, I played the Royal Hawaiian, and then I don't even know if you guys know, but funny that Roxy just learned that I was Sarah of the Sarah and Mabel tag team, the hillbilly girls with the mask, with the hoods. Really? That was, yeah, that was me. So I played Sarah, who was the one that wore the white mask. Yeah. And then Ashley Cartier was Mabel, who wore the black mask. And so I always thought that it would be a dead giveaway because of my my kind of stockiness and my body shape. You know, I thought people would figure it out. And so on purpose, we had to intentionally change our mannerisms, our voices. I have a deep voice. So we would talk like this and we were like from the head, you know, so we had these really high pitched yes. kind of voices. And so everybody's like, I would have never guessed that that was you. And I'm like, it was. You know, That's so kind of, crazy. kind of funny. And then Nadine was a good girl. I was a bad girl, but we ended up being those two characters as a tag team. So, but her and I both were actresses. So it was, you know, playing a, playing a part and lots of fun. We had a blast. Yeah, I, uh, I've, I've always wanted to do a hooded gimmick in wrestling, um, but I just know that the way I, the way I walk, the, just the way I carry myself it's a dead giveaway well, but see, that's what i thought i, I thought for sure i, I just don't i, I, I don't. thought the fans would have really even even the diehard glow fans right it was like you're kidding me you didn't know that that was me and i guess like for royal hawaiian i always wore flesh tone leggings mm -hmm. so with sarah intentionally i wore black so it would camouflage mm -hmm. so you could maybe not tell so much you know there you go. and the only bummer is is our our hoods were not like a lucha mask right where it's nice and fitted and all that so the bummer with those things is they would turn around so we would have to like turn the eye holes <laughs> you know around in the middle of the map so we could figure out where the hell we were going that, yeah, that, that's, that so could be scary kind of comical. yeah yeah because <laughs> that reminds me, we, we in uh, the company that I primarily work for, when we have new people coming up, we usually have them do matches under hoods before they, um, you know, create their actual gimmick. And we have uh -huh. all, we have different, like we have the Red Dragon, and we have um, uh, El Cardinal, and just, but they they're all played by different people. Like mm -hmm. one week El Cardinal could be as big as me. And then be, next week be a tiny little skinny guy, but it's still El Cardinal. And, yeah. But I remember one time this one guy, he was a real tiny skinny guy, and he's the only person I knew that the mask didn't fit. It was just baggy on his face. Too big. So they, his opponent that night was a big bodybuilder, and um, it was a squash match, of course. And he went out there, and you talk about how the mask would, would turn on your face and stuff. Yeah. As part of the ma a part of the match, um, the bodybuilder being the heel took the mask and turned it all the way backwards on the guy, <laughs> and then well that's that's what it happened. Yeah, and then hit him with a big um, airplane spin, and that was the end of the match. But yeah, that it, it could be. And then afterwards, the kid was freaked out. He's like, "I don't want to ever do that spot again. That was scary. I don't want to do that ever again. I couldn't see anything." So yeah, yeah. it can be pretty pretty scary with the mask turning around. Yeah, um, so it was, it was fun. It was a nice, you know, um, a nice change, you know, because I, I, I wasn't visible, but it was challenging because we had to change the mannerisms. Mm -hmm. So we didn't look like our previous characters and sound like them, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I had a good time because I had the, the different things to do. So I played um, Sierra, did the Royal Hawaiian, then I was a trainer and helped with the, you know, the production of the, of the show because we had to be at all the rehearsals and all the workouts because the writers and, and, and the producer and director would say, okay, who's, who's ready to move on to a singles match? Who can handle that now? Who's getting it? Who do you think can last versus on a tag team? You know, some, some of the girls only had their character, you know, uh, Hollywood, for example, she loved the pool. So she asked for a room down on the first floor by the pool because after she did her workout, off she went to the <laughs> to the pool. Mm -hmm. You know, whereas for me and Americana or like Ashley, we had the two characters. We had to be around with all the girls to go through all that. So we had like like a lot of people asked me, well, we don't see you. How come you didn't have like individual skits? I said, because I was too busy that 
to do the workouts with all the girls, mm -hmm. I my time was there. So like when they were maybe filming someone's spot, like the Ashley and asking Ashley or um, California doll with their things, I didn't have a lot of extra time to do all that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's that's why I didn't do it. You know, it's not that I didn't right. want to. It's just that there was just only so many hours in a day, you know, so it's kind of how that went. <laughs> So, totally un unrelated question. Um, you being the Royal Hawaiian, I just recently tried Hawaiian food for the first time. You have got to be kidding. Um, Where? Well, it was it was in uh, in Florida. <laughs> but it was in a, Florida, it was okay. A, it was a That's Hawaiian, okay. <laughs> Hawaiian restaurant. And um, I'm trying to think what it was called. But it was what did you have? Good. You don't remember? Uh, was it Kalua pig? Was it pork? Uh, was it was, in, was it Lao Lao in a tea leaf? No, uh, there was. Is, it, is there something called Masubi? Oh, you had a <laughs> yeah. Everybody gets that right. A musubi. A musubi. So was, it, was it spam with the rice and the nori around it? Yeah. Yeah. And that's pretty bomb, good. That's bomb. Huh? That's pretty good. <laughs> I, I make I make pretty good ones. My my son is a uh, fanatic with. Yeah. He he could eat that every day when we lived in Hawaii. It's, I mean, oh, it's yeah. a staple. I mean, you know? I already like spam, but that took spam yeah. to the next level. Oh, well, they're they're the best. Yeah, it's and then so oh, good. Huli Huli chicken. Huli Huli chicken. Oh man, that's like one of my favorites. I, I had that. That's what huli, I had. Huli Huli means turn around. So like when you're dancing hula, yeah. they'll say Huli Huli, you know, and you turn around and you dance and you you actually rotate. So Huli Huli chicken is like what we call a rotisserie chicken, like going to Sam's or Costco and you got a rotisserie right. chicken. That's what it is. It's on okay. the thing and it's spinning. That's hooli hooli. All right. Okay. That's what that so is. I know that's totally off off, off subject, but <laughs> that's okay. Had... But you know what? Now you make me want to go and have Hawaiian food. <laughs> I, tell you, so I, I haven't had supper yet, and it's it's past well, my we, supper time we have, already. <laughs> we have Kings Hawaiian here in Torrance, and that's where I go with my buddy Juan, and and we'll go have like spam and fried rice and eggs, or what's it you called? Know, pig, and oh yeah. What's the place called? It's called King's Hawaiian. You know the King's Hawaiian like brand? Like the rolls? Like the rolls? Yeah. Well, that's, that's oh. actually made here in I'm, California. I'm so jealous. So <laughs> Can you jealous. believe that? And there's actually the King's Hawaiian Bakery. So they have, it's a restaurant. Wow. And they have the bakery is to die for. Wow. So everything you could think of from rainbow chiffon cakes to their donuts to their pastries to the cake everything you can wow. think of i mean aside from all the food <laughs> yeah. one last yeah. thing about food is like macaroni salad a big thing in hawaii yes that's like, another staple so that's, in hawaii a too. plate lunch basically is two scoops rice one mac salad and then your main entree so you want barbecue chicken you want terry chicken you want pork you want uh, meatloaf you want beef stew so that's like, those are what we call, isn't it's a there, plate lunch. Isn't so there it, something called it comes moho? in a box. I mean, it's the greatest thing that ever lived, you know? And from the time we were kids, that's what you went and it came in a box. I mean, literally in a box, a plate in a square, almost like a pizza box, right? Just a little right. square. They put the plate in there. They put two scoops of rice, scoop mac, and whatever you want, spaghetti, yep. you know, big spaghetti. Or it, you know, it's... If you've never been to Hawaii, guys, and you need to get your okoli to Hawaii, I would, I'd, to I'd like to go some, once. Oh, delicious once. food! Yeah, what? It, 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 and I'm, I'm stuck on food because I'm a fat guy and I love food. <laughs> um, but uh, a, it's like a, a, a hamburger steak with gravy. Is that called moho? Yes. A loco moco. A loco moco, yeah. A loco okay. moco. So you take your scoops of rice, mm -hmm. you put your hamburger patty on, you. Put gravy all over. If you like onions, you know, there's all kind of, you know, added things that you could put. But that's pretty much local that, That's my, can, that's, yeah, yeah. That's, and that's Ono too. Yeah. But my yeah. thing is, is I love fried rice. So I do fried rice with Spam and Portuguese sausage and my over easy eggs smacked on top of the rice. Okay, so when are we coming to eat at your house? Hey, you know what, guys? Yes. When you're in Cali, oh <laughs> come on gosh, down. That sounds... We have lots of Hawaiian here. So on the west side, um, it's actually called the South Bay area, which is like by uh, Redondo Beach, Gardena, by LAX. Mm -hmm. So if you come into the LAX area, there's lots of local Hawaiian places okay. and lots of food. My favorite is we have a shave ice place 
um, in Carson, right by my buddy Juan's house. It's called Tasty Block Shave Ice, and they serve my favorite, which is Pineapple Dole Whip. Oh, so everybody, yeah. everybody that. that comes into L.A., either when I pick them up at the airport or when I take them home to the airport, we take a, a detour and we go to Tasty Block and we have, so they serve Lampert's ice cream, shave ice, and then the pineapple Dole Whip. It's too oh, yeah. Pineapple Whip is a thing here. Uh, oh, yeah. It's, um, it's, and, but they do it fair. great. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, they only used to have it at Disneyland mm-hmm. or Hawaii. And right. then now, if you find a yogurt shop, like people ask me all the time, we see you do your lives. And then over here in Chino Hills, there's another place. It's called, um, um, oh my gosh, he's going to kill me. Um, my, my buddy, Mark, um, I, I'm going to have to look it up because <laughs> I, I, do I, I do this every time. It's, um, oh my God, he's going to kill me. Um, and they serve theirs with ice cream on the bottom and then they do your shave ice and then they put a dollop of the pineapple dole whip Ooh. on top man i'm trying to get Morty oh yeah to come it's out delicious to california delicious. for wrestlemania next year yeah I'm... well are you guys coming i'm coming i'm trying to get him to come oh my god you Morty, you gotta come don't let the royal it's hawaiian Hula down King. i don't know i you know it's, i have senior moments but hula tang shave ice is in Chino Hills, which is about 15 minutes from my house. Mm-hmm. And it's the bar. Mm-hmm. Totally yummy, yummy, yummy. So you can go in there and just tell them the Royal Hawaiian sent you and they'll set you up. But <laughs> Tasty Block is by LAX. So that's like about 45 minutes from me. Okay. But if you come for WrestleMania, then Tasty Block is not too far from where all the action's gonna be, where SoFi is. It's about maybe 20 minutes from mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. where the where WrestleMania is gonna be. So I might even, well, we're, we're working on some stuff. So maybe I might be able to bring the shave ice truck to an event, because okay. we're working on some stuff. So the Wrestling Revolution, who is my, they're my, my friends who are wrestling promoters and they do, they do a lot for me and have, mm-hmm. you know, and wonders um we're working on some stuff and so for wrestlemania because i'm going with my buddy sam who's my my wrestling buddy from jersey Mm -hmm. so we are going and then did you know that 2024 is in philly so it looks like i'm gonna go two years in a row yeah you 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 want me to go to philly too i used to do a bunch of uh, wrestling shows um in philadelphia the new york area so it'll be nice yeah so yeah actually um I don't know when this is going to be on, but I was supposed to be in Jersey this month, and it looks like I'm not going to make it. So I know everybody's going to be bummed, depending on when this airs. But um, I was supposed to be at the asylum at Wrestle Bash. I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah, and so um, just some things are coming up, and I got some, you know, medical issues and things like that. So I'm kind of going to um, take a a break and not go, which I'm not really happy about but you gotta focus on yourself time. sometimes yeah so there'll be there'll be other things going on and we're working on some stuff and so you know we'll see we'll see what goes on but yeah so lots going on so it's kind of exciting but you should come morning because wrestlemania at sofi is gonna be amazing it, it just depends how many days of vacation i have around that time so yeah then you better it. check it out yeah. and uh start getting ready and make some plans because if you are in town if i if i don't get uh, a truck to come out we can always go to tasty block That's true. and have shave ice and or mm-hmm. pineapple dole whip mm-hmm. nice it's nice. delish yeah you're, you're always, and we can even go for hawaiian food oh yeah <laughs> you're always busy on, on social media always doing mm-hmm. these events and interacting and so you said you were gonna not be able to make an appearance but are you, are you doing anything more local like it seems like you're um, always somewhere. Yeah, we, well, you know, people ask you, well, why do you do it? I mean, you know, I said, well, you know, there's a few of us that's, that are active and we mm-hmm. do it. Um, for me, primarily, I do it for the fans. I yeah. do it for the fans and I do it to keep the brand alive. And, you know, some might say, yeah, but you go to these smaller events. I said, hey, the indie wrestling and the people that are in WWF today, guess what? Where did they start? Mm -hmm. So guess what? I support wrestling of all levels, you know? And 
you know, I'm actually, I, I, one, one girl came with their family to the meet and greet that we just had in Buena Park with the wrestling revolution. And this one was, uh, we had, um, Bob Orton, um, and, uh, that one we had, oh, we had, um, uh, May, May Valentine. Mm -hmm. And then we had, um, who else was there? Marty Scrolls. He was there and one of the girls came with their family and she's into taekwondo or karate or one of those things but she said i really would like to get into wrestling you know and i showed her some of the videos and i said hey you know what i'm friends with um sylvia and joey munoz who have a wrestling school here the santino brothers so i said you know what why don't you look into maybe going to school you know so there's there's young girls that are interested just don't know where to go or the direction so just by me going out and being able to talk to someone like that you know you never know and the stories that we get Isn't and Joey when you Peterson see the fans like roxy and i were at rupaul's comic-con at la convention center and we had two, one guy and one girl come up and were crying they saw us and they were like, oh, my God. She goes, I'm an 80s child. She goes, you don't understand what you guys did for me. And I mean, in tears. I mean, we got it on video, you know. And I'm wow. like, okay, that's going to go in my documentary, right, or my autobiography. <laughs> but we have the girl literally in tears, you know. And so it's just amazing, you know, just by being out, you know, and, and hearing their stories, realizing that what we did, and how that might have changed their lives. We had a couple people at one Comic-Con one year tell us that if it wasn't for us, they wouldn't have been here. And we're like, well, what do you mean? They're like, well, I was at that point where they were contemplating suicide. And they said they couldn't really grasp the fact that Saturday morning, they would not be able to watch Glow. And we're like, whoa. And wow. so it was like a whole crowd of people. And this girl is standing there pouring her heart out. And all of us are just in tears, right? Just Man. listening to this. And we're like, really? It was intense. You know? And so that same Comic-Con, we had two women tell us. And then one guy, after our panel, we do a panel on like Saturday in a conference room. And fans come. A gentleman came. Same thing. And he said, you know, he says, I'm going to tell you, you girls saved my life. Wow. And it's just like, oh, you know, and pulling in your heartstrings. And, mm -hmm. and so, you know, you hear all these things and, and, you know, it's like, why do you do it? That's why we do it, Absolutely. you know, or we, we get the kids that say, you know what? I am that eight year old little boy who is now in a 42 year old man's body. Mm -hmm. And do you know what I used to do when I was a kid and you came on TV? He said, you would not believe it. I mean, we have a big LGBTQ community mm -hmm. where people say, guess what? Back in the eighties, we couldn't come out of the closet. Right. This was something that was not acceptable. Right. You guys crossed over into a male dominant dominated field in this sport and you were the first all female wrestling league tv show whatever you want to you know call us mm -hmm. that the things you did inspired just all walks of life to say hey they can do that i can do that i that can do awesome. what i need to do and so we so we have lots of different fans and they are just wonderful fans support and just i mean we they're they're all over it's just crazy so you know i mean who would have thought that i'd be sitting here talking to you 35 years later right absolutely talking yeah. about what i well, yeah it, you well, know it's, so, it, it's amazing and that's why so when people ask me well why do you do this i said that's exactly why you do it. do you think i'm getting rich selling royal hawaiian and glow t-shirts i mean i sell t-shirts and we have eight by tens and what have you but right. guess what I'm not, I'm not living in a mansion, right? I mean, right. Th this is not about the money, you know? So that's, it's the legacy of what it is we did. What, yes. what yeah, did absolutely. we bring to the, now, now we are finally getting recognized and people are saying, oh, you guys are trailblazers. Oh, you guys are legends. Oh, you guys were the ones who brought this, that, you know, had there never been Royal Hawaiians and Nanuchkas and, and Matilda the Hun and Mount Fiji's. There wouldn't be no Charlotte Flair. There wouldn't be no Bianca Belair. There wouldn't be a Becky Lynch. Right? All of this, you know, and so when you look at it, and, you know, I was not a wrestling fan. Mm -hmm. 
back then. Like I didn't know anything about it. But as I started doing the meet and greets, doing the comic cons, doing the wrestling events, it's like I didn't like going on an interview and not knowing what they're talking about. I mean, because some of us were, we had no clue. We didn't know what it was about. And even today, there's some of the girls that were on the show that today, they are not involved in wrestling. Right. They don't have an interest in it. They had a family. They had a happy life. They're they're happy with their situation. But guess what? That's okay. Mm-hmm. But for me, I enjoyed going out and talking to the fans and talking to you guys. And But at the same time, I have my buddy Sam in Jersey. I have Juan here in California. I've got all the close fans. I got Omar in Jersey. I got Sal in New York. You know, I got all the different fans that reach out and have kept me, uh, you know, up to date. I get regular, you know, messages that say, hey, did you see what happened on SummerSlam? Oh, how about the tractor? You know, what? Mm-hmm. All so I didn't like that I wasn't versed early on when we started this. I knew a little, I tried to stay up to it, but now I'm actually, I mean, you know, I got, I got the Bianca Belair. I got the, I got the picture of me and Bianca. I met her at, at, at um, Money in the Bank, right? I got, I got my, my, um, sorry, my Money in the Bank t-shirt, you know, I just was going through some stuff, but you know, I've got um, Drew McIntyre pops. I got the little figures from from uh, whatever store they came from. Because I have people that buy them for me now. They know I'm a big Drew McIntyre fan. And so I almost did too. He was in Atlanta this past Friday and I almost got on a plane and tried to go and see him. Well, I, I've, I've heard a rumor a that that's your, that's your boyfriend. It is my boyfriend, that's, just well, don't that's tell I've his heard wife. That. I've heard that, right. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I thought. You've heard that. That's yeah. right. That, that's not a rumor. So just just so you know, you can you can you can spread that around. Okay, all right. It's not a rumor. It's a truth. And I, and I don't mind. I'm not trying to be a home wrecker, but <laughs> he is my he is my favorite male wrestler, mm-hmm. besides The Rock, of course. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, so I almost was going to get on a plane, but then guess what? My car, my brakes were going bad, so I had to take the car into the shop, so I couldn't go. I was going to go just for those two hours because he was only there for a signing for two hours. Man. And I was, and that's how I am. I'm crazy enough that I would have done it. <laughs> so. That's, that's not crazy at all. I mean, I've, no. I, I've drove, I know I drove six hours for a concert before that I could have drove two hours the next week. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you know what? It's, you got to do it. You I know, know. it's too I, short. And, oh yeah. Absolutely. You know, and, and, and I'm now, I, I mean, I can say I'm a full-fledged wrestling fan, you know, and it's not, you know, like everybody says, well, why you, you know, you really like it? I'm like, yeah, I like it. You know, mm-hmm. I, I have had a ball just meeting all, I, mean, I met Tugboat, I've met a Godfather, mm-hmm. Ron Ort, um, Carlito, Chris Masters, um, Candice Michelle. You know, all the different people that in in the time that I've been doing this, these are the people that I have, you know, watched. And even though I may not have watched them back when they were doing it originally, they're people now that I admire and respect because of what they did. And then to see, you know, I'm now doing shows with these people, right? Yes. And, and here it is where people say, oh, so why do you do it? That's why I do it. It's a blast. Yeah. You know, I have... I have these great opportunities to to be doing a, a meet and greet with them, and then our fans come and they see us, and then they get to see all these other people as well. So it's just it, it's been you know everybody asked yeah, but you know what you suffer every day with the pain from your injuries from wrestling. Would you do it again if you if you had a choice to do it all over again? Absolutely. Yeah. In a heartbeat. Yeah, we, you know? we so, for sure. Like. You're talking about, you know, seeing all these people. I mean, we've had had moments like that. We're, of course, relatively new in the convention world, but we did a convention, uh, um, the Squared Circle Expo in Indianapolis, and we were sitting there, and we brought um, the hustler Rip Rogers with us. Was at our, he was with, at our table, and there was a moment where Ricky the Dragon Steamboat walked by, and um, yep. he bumped shoulders with me, and I said, "Excuse me," and he kept he kept walking, and Rip goes. Rick Steamboat, and Ricky kind of just waves, thinking it's a fan or something, 
And Rip goes, well, F you too, Ricky Steamboat. And he turns around like he's ready to just, you know, beat somebody up. And then he realizes it's Rip. And he's like, oh, Rip, I didn't know it was you, man. And he came over and sat at our table and talked for a little bit. And I'm just sitting here going, that's, 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 yeah, Rick, that's Ricky Steamboat. He's my favorite. I, I, I got to meet like, him when we like, um, got the um, award from CAC Hall of Fame. I got to meet Ricky Steamboat. Awesome. So he, he's been my... Um, all time favorite for a, a back in the day wrestler. And then oh, of yeah. course the rock is my today. And then now my boyfriend drew, you know, but yeah. Um, yeah. So those kinds of things, you just don't know. I mean, I did one of our first shows that we did way back with um, Tommy Fierro mm -hmm. in um, Jersey was at wrestle, um, wrestle, WrestleCon, WrestleCon, wrestle or eighties, wrestle eighties, WrestleCon. And so we had, Sergeant Slaughter, we had Ricky Steamboat, we had Tatanka. Um, oh, I always forget my my booth mate. Oh my goodness, I always do this, and I have such a mental block. He's a first and last name. He's um, oh God, it's see, it is a senior moments, guys. But anyway, I'll think of it when I when I think. But um, just all the guys that were there, this flower doesn't want to stay. I don't know. Sorry, guys. It's, a, it's okay. But you know, so. Back Back in the day, you know, and then like uh, I did Rhode Island Comic Con and I met um, Demolition. I was there with Lisa Marie, my buddy, Victoria. Um, we Kurt Angle was there. Um, Devon was right next. So we had a blast, <laughs> you know. So it's just all the people that I've met along the way just make it so worth everything I do, you know. Absolutely. That, um, I'll do it until I can't do it anymore. You know, everybody says, well, why? I recently had um, an ex-boyfriend from way in the past say, well, are you ready to give up all the glow stuff? He says, you need to stop that tomorrow and then we'll get married and we'll go settle down in Vegas. And I said, what? He go I said, tomorrow? He goes, tomorrow. And I said, like, okay, well, I got commitments all the way till the beginning of mid next year. I said, I've got things that are already, you know, in the works that I can't just drop things tomorrow. Right. Oh, it's my way or no way. I said, well, I guess it's no way. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no like, way. like you know? I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to be with somebody that gives ultimatums anyway. Yeah. Hello. You know right. I mean? Like, come on. That's crazy. Yeah. So I was just like, well, wait, wait a minute. You're what? You're telling me to do what? <laughs> I was like, I don't think so. I said, I will probably do this as long as people want to still see us come come out and and meet the fans then then we'll we'll do that and we've got some stuff going on so like um roxy and sunny and i are doing an event in uh west hollywood at hamburger mary's it's a it's going to be a charity um event for uh one of the animal shelters it's going to be like a bingo night and the and the glow girls are going to be there to help promote and raise money for that and then we're we're doing um, our show at Oscars in Palm Springs, mm -hmm. which is kind of going to be a, like a night with the Glow Girls. There's about five or six of us that are going to be there. Myself, Roxy, Sunny, Gremlina is coming in from the East Coast. Dallas is going to be there. And I think we might be getting Ashley. I'm not sure. But that one is going to be a great night. That's September 16th. I think it's Friday night. Mm -hmm. And, um, and be right we're now. also doing, uh, in September, we're doing um, Placerville. Comic Con, which is up North California, it's kind of by Fresno, and I think that one's going to be some of those same girls. That's that's a event Sunny uh, goes to all the time, and so now we're trying to get a few more girls. And right now, I'm trying to organize going to CAC in Vegas. So I they just I just talked to one of the gentlemen today to see if um, firming that up, but that would be uh, September 26, 27, 28th in Vegas at the Plaza Hotel. So. Any wrestling fans, it's a great opportunity to see some, you know, real um, exciting wrestlers, you know, uh, some old timers, some current, and even some of the new wrestlers, you know, will be there. So that one's, uh, you can come into the nostalgia room, which is where I normally am, and I bend and sign autographs and pictures and t-shirts and all that, and there's no charge to go, you know, the public can come and you can purchase whatever merchandise you want, and, and it's a great event to come to, to to actually uh, meet some of the legends that, you know, you probably would have to pay a lot of money to see right now. Wow. So those are some of the things that are coming up. And then there's some more exciting things coming up a little bit um, more into October and November. And then of course, December, we're usually at Comic-Con and things like that. So 
you know, it's always something, something around, you know, usually one or two different events a month. And um, I've been working a lot with the Wrestling Revolution. That's Danny and Reg Ibarra. And they bring a lot of great talent uh, awesome. to California. So the, the fans here really get to see some uh, demolition. I mean, they haven't been here. I don't I don't know when the last time they were in the area. And so, you know, those that caliber of legends that are yeah. are able to and, and, and it's an event that you don't even have to pay to get in. We do our events and it's a meet and greet that there's no entrance fee. You come in and we just ask that you purchase at least one eight by ten from one of the talents and they usually bring anywhere from five to eight or nine different wrestlers female wow. and male wrestlers and so i've been bringing um some of the glow girls now so some of them are available and just trying to you know get us still out there and we've got some other things in the work so hopefully awesome. you know we'll be able to tell you about you know updating you on what's going on and For things sure. like that cool all right well, I think this is the, yeah. that should uh, complete today's uh, interview. We thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for taking the time. Um, no problem, guys. Uh, and uh, we want you to know we do appreciate everything that you've done for um, wrestling in general. Um, like you said earlier, a trailblazer. That is exactly what you are. And um, it has been an thank honor to have you on so the podcast. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you. No problem. And if anybody, you know, has any questions, they could always um, reach me on um, Instagram is Royal Hawaiian 25. If you go on Facebook under April Hom, that's H O M. And on Twitter, it's uh, glow underscore Royal. And my email is April 25 at gmail.com. Reach out to me. You guys um, are interested in any kind of merchandise or getting in touch with any of the other girls and stuff like that. We usually try and post all, all of our events um you can go on um wrestling meet and greet is one of the pages on facebook that myself and the wrestling revolution man so we try and put all events on there whether it's pro indie women's male whatever you want on there that's what we put so we try and put all of our things on there also just to let you know there is um another show that um i'm involved with right now and it's uh called More Than a Wrestler. And this is um, something that uh, Roxy actually came up with that name and is, is now being turned into a book with Ken uh, Pen Ken, mm -hmm. who is uh, doing our um, YouTube interviews and is gonna come out sometime soon. So that's something awesome. for people to look forward to. There's already been, I think about four or five interviews already. Mine hasn't aired yet, but it's coming. Okay. So yeah, you can look at that and look forward to some, you know, some exciting other projects. Fantastic. So thanks for every, everything you guys. I'm, I'm happy to come on and I, I hear that Brian has connections with WWE folks. So, you know, anytime you can, we're getting closer. Can, can, get me a, can get me a personalized autograph picture from my boyfriend since uh, I don't think his wife would, would be so excited <laughs> about me uh, <laughs> yes, intruding. But I just admire him and he's just a great, I'm looking forward to seeing him at, um, at the, uh, what is it? Um, the new the event coming up with him and Roman, what's it uh, called? Clash at the castle. castle. Mm -hmm. Class at the cat. Class at the castle. Yeah, <laughs> that. So we'll see how that goes. But everything this you know for SummerSlam was exciting, and I'm looking forward to WrestleMania. So come on, Marty, get ready with that vacation and come to Cali. Yes, it's yeah. gonna be awesome. <laughs> Thank you so I'll much. I'll take you to have Hawaiian food and and shave pass ice or pineapple go with. That That's up. a good one. That's a good one. Hawaii. Go eat Hawaiian with the yeah. royal Hawaiian. My God. <laughs> That's right. All right. That's so okay. cute. If you don't show up, it'll just be Brian and me and a bunch of glow girls. Yeah. <laughs> don't blow it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks thank you a lot, so much. Guys. Have nice. a good one. Hey everybody, it's Morty. It's Brian. And thank you for watching today's episode of Developmentally Speaking. If you could, please click that subscribe button. And don't forget to punch that bell icon so you can get notified whenever we go live or drop a new video every Monday. Well, thanks for watching, guys. And we'll see you on the next Developmentally Speaking.